Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through the 10 principles of neuroplasticity and how to use them to maximize your recovery. I'll be giving you some examples to better break down these principles and some actionable tips that you can use at home. So let's talk about the first principle, which is use it or lose it. I know you've heard this one about a thousand times, but it is repeated so often because it's important. The brain is a fickle friend. Um, it will prioritize or let certain pathways go. And the pathways I'm talking about are brain pathways from brain to body and from body to brain. And in order for the brain to decide to upkeep those pathways, we have to use them. So for example, let's say that someone has been learning to play the violin. They play for two weeks and then they give it up and try to pick it up six months later. Well, they're gonna be pretty rusty, right? The brain pathways have degraded because they, they weren't challenged, they weren't used. So when you don't use those pathways, you lose them. But here's the good news. The bright side is the second principle, which is use it to improve it. And the, the opposite, the flip side of this is that the brain prioritizes pathways, brain to body, body to brain, that are used. So if you keep challenging yourself, if you keep trying things, the brain will prioritize those pathways and try to rebuild them. So let's put that into the example with the violin. Let's say that that same person instead decided to practice playing the violin for 30 minutes every day of the week. Well, at the end of the six months, they're not gonna be rusty. They'll, they'll, they have been practicing, their brain has been prioritizing those pathways. So they're going to be much better than the person who played for two weeks and then decided to give it up. It's the same in recovery. The more that you are challenging areas that have been impacted after the stroke, the more your brain is gonna prioritize those. So now we're gonna move on to specificity, which is the third principle. Now specificity is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna to try to break it down. You want what you're doing to specifically target the outcome that you want. So I'm gonna give you the example of the violinist again. Let's say that that person is trying to learn how to play the violin, but they're also playing the piano as well. Now you may get some things that carry over to the violin, like finger flexibility and learning notes and chords, but if you only practice the piano, you're not gonna get the outcome that you want on the violin. Those are two different things. So in your own recovery, you know, if you're really trying to work on wrist extension, don't only do bicep curls because that's not gonna target the specific thing that you're trying to work on. Now, the fourth principle is repetition. And I know this one gets said a lot too. It's, you've probably heard it a thousand times, but it is very important. Repetition, specifically high repetition of exercises and activities, produce those brain changes that we're looking for, like what I talked about and use it to improve it. The repetition can help to create those brain pathways more quickly. Um, and the research is still not completely solid on how many repetitions is enough. But there have been some studies that have come out, specifically some animal studies that have come out that say between 400 to 600 repetitions daily of that specific movement is what's needed to cause brain reorganization or changing those brain pathways. And I've seen other studies in humans that require thousands of repetitions over the course of several days. So it's a matter of doing more is better. All right, our fifth principle is intensity matters. And this asks the question, how much and how often? And we've answered part of that with the repetitions, but I wanna take this into an example. So like I was mentioning before with the violinist, the person who is practicing 30 minutes a day, every day of the week is going to get better at that much more quickly than someone who only practices say two days a week. And this is where some of that false thinking comes in. And I've heard from a lot of people who say, oh, well, I go to my therapy sessions, you know, once or twice a week, that should be enough. It's not. Unfortunately, it's not. It's up to you to continue bringing that therapy through your daily life to really make those changes and see that progress. 
Now, the sixth principle is time matters. And I want to preface this one that, you know, if you haven't seen my video on um, stroke recovery after one year, the, the toxic myth you shouldn't believe, I would recommend going to watch that. What I will say here is that, yes, we do know that typically in that first three to six months, our brains are much more plastic and they are making changes much more quickly. But I just want to note here that just because there is quicker recovery happening earlier in your recovery doesn't mean that progress can't happen later in your recovery. I have seen it happen years afterwards. Um, it's just that you have a moment in time where you can really capitalize on the ability of your brain to make changes quickly. So if you're in those early stages, take advantage of it. And if not, just know that some of those changes may come a little bit more slowly. Principle seven is salience matters. And this one is important because it looks at what is important to you. Our brains like things that they are familiar with. And if you can think of ways to do stuff that you enjoy, stuff that's relevant to you as part of your recovery, your brain is gonna like that. Now the next principle is age matters. And this is just based on basic biology and anatomy that tells us younger brains are more plastic, they are more adaptable. Think about you know young kids who are learning so much information. They're gonna be quicker at learning a musical instrument than an adult. It doesn't mean that the adult can't learn how to play an instrument, it just may come more slowly. If you're older and you've had a stroke, it doesn't mean that you can't recover from a stroke or you can't utilize these principles of neuroplasticity. It just means that the younger you are, the easier time that your brain is going to have making those plastic changes. And the older you are, you may just see those changes come slower. Principle nine is generalization or transference. And that basically means that we can obtain skills doing one thing, but we can also utilize those skills while doing something different. It, th those skills don't just stand alone, we can utilize them differently. So for example, you know, like in stroke recovery, if you're learning how to get better wrist extension, and maybe you're practicing that movement, well, you can use that as you work to brush your hair, but you can also use that movement as you go to dust shelves or wipe down a window. In the same way, if we go back to our violin versus piano example, you know, if you're doing both of those things, maybe you learned how to play piano first, well, you might have better finger flexibility, which is going to allow you to put your fingers better onto the violin neck. So some of those skills transfer from one activity to another. All right, and our last principle is interference. And interference, the nature of it is when something gets in the way. And it's just something to keep in your back pocket to remember as you're going through your recovery process. Let's say that you've gotten a little bit of arm movement back, but maybe in the hospital, your therapist taught you how to do one-handed dressing. And that was great. That is what you needed at that time. But if you have started to get movement back, you should start using that movement as much as you can in day-to-day -day life. Because if you keep using the one-handed dressing technique, even though you have movement and that arm can help, you are interfering with your progress. Keep in mind where some things that may have been beneficial early on, you may need to switch to and try something different. And just be aware that things may get in the way of your progress that previously helped. And just keep an eye out for those things. All right, everyone, I hope that that was helpful for you all today. Love for you to leave me a comment down below and let me know how have you used neuroplasticity in your recovery journey. As always, I am leaving a link down in the description below to sign up for my email list, which gets you three free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails a week, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.